The first step in a mold-free house is a dry patch of land to place your footing. Before building foundation walls on top of that footing, go the extra foot and paint the top with a capillary break. This will prevent the walls from turning into wicks. And keep those buckets of waterproofing handy because you're going to need them when you paint the walls before backfilling, even if you're going to add a dimple sheet. Filling holes in concrete block provides structure, but it also stops a lot of air leakage that can flow through the walls. As long as you're filling the holes, stick some anchor bolts in there too. Inside, gravel and gravity work to prevent wicking, and continuous plastic above will combat bulk water attacks. But first, the mud sills, which sit atop a sill sealer gasket. Before bolting them down, seal the gaps between the boards. These gaps may get covered by some other materials later, but right now, they represent a direct path between inside and outside. And a little bead of caulk can cure that right now. This is clearly more caulk than you need, but in animation land, it doesn't squeeze out and get all over your pants, hands, and boots. It just sits there, perfectly sealing the gap. Now, you can install nuts on those bolts and get ready for plastic. A slick tip from Ray Williams of Mark IV Builders is to spread scrappy beat-up plastic on the gravel before spreading the finished sheeting. This scrappy layer acts as a sacrificial layer to absorb the brunt of the foot traffic during construction. Floor plastic should drape over the floor but also up the walls to the mud sill. If you can't get it all in one sheet, overlap the seams 6 inches and tape them with a high quality construction tape. Staple the plastic into the mud sill to hold it in place and install sheets of rigid insulation over the plastic. There are various ways to attach this to the concrete walls. You can also fasten directly into the mud sill. Next, seal the gap between the foam board, plastic, and mud sill with low expansion foam. Also, seal the corners, including any gaps between foam boards. And then go along the bottom of the insulation panels. Now, you've got continuous water, air, and thermal boundaries between the inside and the outside world.